Yeah! The kids at this picnic are growing up in a world that's very different from the one most of us experience. Say abracadabra. It's a world where people make more sense than things. Thank you, thank you so much for coming. Join me as Scientific American Frontiers enters the worlds of children who are growing up different. All of us convinced that we're different from the other kids. And of course we are. A lot of our time as kids is spent trying to figure out what everybody else is doing and thinking and why, you know, and it's tough. Perhaps it's the toughest part of being a kid. And it takes years and years, sometimes a lifetime of practice. But for some kids, this struggle to understand the world is even tougher. It's because the difference that they're born with is so profound that the world is more baffling than usual. In this program, we spend some time with children who are growing up different and with some of the researchers who are trying to understand why they see the world the way they do. We'll see how the insights that these researchers are achieving are not only helping the kids who are different make sense of the rest of us, but they're also helping the rest of us understand what it means to be human. Yeah! We're at a picnic in La Jolla, California. At first glance, the kids here are like most kids. Certainly they're high-spirited enough. <laughs> but they're all linked by possessing a rare genetic disorder called Williams syndrome. Hello, Hi. are you Scott? I'm Scott. How, How are, are you? Alda. So are you? Nice, nice to see nice you. Nice to meet you. How are you? You were the uh, best uh, in uh, uh, Nash. I'll tell you that. Oh, you thank were you. The best doctor in Nash I ever seen. <laughs> Listen, I know you don't give up. Scott and Steve are 39-year-old identical twins, both with Williams syndrome. Uh, so is this good. Ursula? Yes. yes. Ursula. Hi, how are you? <laughs> While Ursula Belugi is one of Scott and Steve's greatest fans. This is, this is a special occasion. It certainly <laughs> is. Who's this? Okay. Ursula is one of a growing number of scientists fascinated by the Hello. extraordinary contradictions of William Syndrome. Hello. Hi, Mr. Alda. My name is Betsy, and I'm very, very glad that you're here and that you can spend some time with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's good to be here. Hi, Wonderful. we met the second one. How are you? Yeah, good. Hi, what's your name? I'm Justin. Justin, hi, I'm glad to meet you. Hi, my name Only is one in 25,000 children is born with Williams nice Syndrome. Hello. Its most characteristic physical feature is an appealing elfin face. No, we didn't make time. On a social occasion like this, kids with Williams Syndrome are in their element. I'm Shannon. How are you, Shannon? Glad to meet you. to a really long, long time. Something that's so clear meeting these kids here today is how affectionate they are. That seems to be a typical personality attribute of these kids. Is that, is, am I right about that? Yeah, yes. I mean, I would say it's affectionate, it's interested in people, it's highly sociable, it's gravitating toward people. I mean, that's their thing in life. So it's, I think, affectionate and sociable. Growing up different uh, with Williams Syndrome, you'll find that you have... Uh, a lot of good times and some bad times. Yeah. And the main thing is that uh, you always have to remember that uh, there are people that, that will take good care of you. But with me and my brother, uh, we didn't find out until much, much later that we had William Syndrome. Okay, come on over, Mr. Okay, okay we're, we're stirring up the magic cake, so you got to stir it up. Just when like Scott and Steve were diagnosed back in the early 1980s, 60 identified cases of Williams Syndrome in the country. It was then that Ursula Belugi began her studies here at the Salk Institute. The first goal of her research team was to build up a better picture of the strengths and weaknesses of people with Williams, whose social skills mask their struggle to make sense of the world. I'm going to ask you some questions that I'd like to answer. Mm -hmm. Justin, can you tell me how many months there are in the year? There's uh, 24 months in the year. Okay, good job. How old is the oldest woman on Earth? I don't know, probably 50. Okay. I don't know. How much does a compact car cost? A compact car? Um, Cars, by the way, are a favorite topic of Justin's. I would say like twenty-four thousand, uh, twenty-four thousand dollars actually. What's the average salary per year for a doctor? Um, I would say eight to forty-five. Uh, uh, I would say like eight dollars and forty-five cents. Per year? Yeah, per year. How many blocks do you have, Barry? One, two, three, four. 
Captain. Eight. You know what? You need another block. Nine. Okay. Okay, make your blocks look just like mine. This is the easiest one. Perhaps the most striking problem for people with Williams is performing visual spatial tasks. They can get the details right without seeing the overall picture. Your blocks look just like mine? Yes. All right. Draw me a bicycle. Do you want to do that? Sir. I just drew my fish, and I made sure it was a 10 speed and had brakes. Mm, nice. I've got two lines at the top here, uh -huh. and there's an array of lines down below. I want right. you to pick out the two lines down here that are pointing in the same direction as those two at the top. Okay. Three. And there is one. Good. In contrast to Betsy's problems with lines, she has little above. trouble with a task Six matching faces. faces. Below. And I want you to pick out the three faces uh, down here that are exactly like this one. That one. Okay. That one. That one. The most intriguing aspect of this face recognition skill was uncovered with the help of a little hat. I think this is the sixth or seventh time I've had electrodes attached <laughs> to my head. Do you want to do it more? It's, I'm really getting into it. The hat houses an array of electrodes to pick up electrical signals from the brain. Oh, oh are you shooting this? <laughs> I'm sorry. You'll be seeing a series of faces. You'll be seeing pairs of faces. You'll see one face, and then it'll go off, and you'll see a second face. And your job is to decide whether that second face is the same person or a different person from the first face. It turns out that when a non-Williams person like me first realizes he's seeing a face, there's a spike of electrical activity about a quarter of a second later, mainly in the right side of the brain. But when a Williams brain sees a face, the response is strikingly different. The surge of electricity is a little later, but five times bigger, and seems to be spread over almost the entire brain. It's like the brain is using as much brain tissue as it can to try to solve this problem. So it's organized in a different way. It's almost as if faces are so important to people with Williams syndrome that their brains throw everything they can into recognizing them. The Williams Syndrome Research Project has little trouble finding eager volunteers. It's a lot of fun now. And I know I can help others that might have it, Williams Syndrome. And help the scientists and people that work so diligently for um, people with the Williams Syndrome to find out why this occurs, um, and further the studies. Have you learned anything from these tests, uh, uh, tracking your brain waves? Have you thought about the way you think? Yes, and, and no, uh, but mostly, mostly I enjoy life now. I used to not really um, enjoy things as much as I do now because I, uh, I've been walking in, in, sh in my shoes uh, with Williams Syndrome, and it's been, been hard for me uh, to find people to find people who are able to accept the situation and be able to accept um, people who are walking around different. I haven't had acupuncture in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest breakthrough into why people like Scott are different came when the genetic basis of Williams syndrome was discovered. When we first came to the salt, we knew nothing about Williams syndrome, nothing about what caused Nobody it. Knew anything. Nobody knew anything. And in such a short time, I'll never forget the day Ursula laid down on the table in front of She put a picture of the gene the chromosome with the gene marked on it and said, there it is, that's what caused it. And I just cried. I just cried. In such a short time for science to go from telling parents, 
your child has Williams syndrome, that's all we know, to being able to say, here's the cause of it. The cause is literally visible under a microscope. When the fluorescent dye, the chromosomes of a normal cell show a bright band in the middle of both copies of chromosome 7. In the cell of a person with Williams syndrome, only one copy of the chromosome has this band. The missing chunk contains only about 25 genes, so scientists are hoping to be able to trace not only the disabilities of people with Williams syndrome, but also some of their special strengths directly back to just a handful of genes. I mean, are you going to find out there's a gene for compassion? I mean, this is, call this it, is... Let's call it sociability and, God damn it, you might. And what? You might. We might. You might. You think, yes. you, think you might actually be able to... I well, mean, that's, that's, that would be case, amazing. I mean, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's, I mean, I think that's sort of the hunt we're on, and I think it's it's a possibility. So you, you're actually, <laughs> by, by studying carefully mm -hmm. what the roots of Williams syndrome are, mm -hmm. you're actually finding out what the roots uh, of qualities that all of us have are. Huh? Yes, I mean, you're beginning absolutely. to track down how we are who we are. I think that's put very, very well, and that is true. And the added fascination that we've got is that we can understand so much more about how the brain does it and how you get, can get in unusual ways to these strong qualities. Why is the keyboard here? Does somebody play? Do you play? I yeah. play. All of us do. do you take turns? One quality that yeah, seems to be possessed by many people with what Williams syndrome is a talent for music. Okay. You make, make up a, a, a song for us. I think that would be great. Okay. It was hard to believe, but That's Betsy right. came up with this song, yeah, yeah. Words and Music, right on the spot. Yeah. beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> yeah, you've by already trying, gone beyond your wildest dreams. By wild. trying to link up an aspect of gene to brain development to higher cognitive functions. Yeah. I don't hope for anything more than that. <laughs> <laughs>